This is an example of axial stress in two different sized blocks. I'm going to use analogy on these two different blocks to show how the same load results in different levels of stress. So on each block, I'm going to place a force representing 600 kips on the smaller one and another force representing 600 kips on the larger one. In the analogy, a filled volume of water will represent that 600 kip force, and the stress will be visually represented by how high up on the container the water rises. I will then calculate the stresses using the relationship stress equals force times area. Each bottle of water represents an amount of force. In this case, we're representing 600 kips of force. So in the red bottle, you can see 600 kips. In the blue bottle, 600 kips. What we're going to demonstrate is how the same amount of force results in different amount of stress in different size columns. So what we have here are two different columns. We have a small column and we have a large column. The small column has an area of 14.44 square inches. The large column has an area of 33.64 square inches. So, what we're going to demonstrate is that the amount of force that you put into a column will result in a stress that's equal to the force divided by the area. So let's take a look. Let's put 600 kips in the red bottle into a, this bigger column. We have 600 kips. We're going to put it into something that has an area of 33.64 square inches. And we can watch the stress increase. Okay. Now, if we put the exact same amount of force into a smaller column, how much stress would we expect? 600 kips divided by 14.44 square inches. And you can see, a lot less force will get us up to about the same stress level. So we're just around 15 KSI there. But if I put the full 600 kips into here, our stress level increases. So to demonstrate how the math works out with our little demonstration, let's do it here. Remember, stress, F, or sigma, is equal to force divided by area. So what we did is we took a force. Um, in one case, on the smaller column, we, we put in 600 kips of force. And in the bigger case, we also put in 600 kips. So in this case, the force is the same. And what happened when we did that? We filled up the left one and it raised up to about there, okay, indicating the level of stress in that, in that column. And in the, the bigger one, the level of stress was much lower. And I indicated on the other video um, exactly how high it went up. This one went up approximately to about 40 KSI and this one went up to about around 15 or 16 KSI. So that was just a, a demonstration to see how it works. So let's see how the math works out. This particular cube is 3.8 inches by 3.8 inches. So if we calculate the stress in this one, F is equal to sigma, two different symbols for the same thing, is equal to 600 kips divided by 3.8 inches times 3.8 inches. And when I do that math, I get 41.55 kips per inch squared. On the bigger one, stress, again, is equal to strain, is equal to 6 100 kips, but this time my area is much bigger, 5.8 inches 
by 5.8 inches. When I do that math, I get 17.83 kips per inches squared. So you can clearly see that for the same amount of force in each of these two, 600 kips, the smaller area gives the higher force and the larger area gives, I'm sorry, gives the higher stress. The larger area gives the smaller stress. Thank you.